The Cold War between the U.S. and the Soviet Union forced the U.S. government to develop a supersonic superbomber aircraft that still rules the skies till today. Say hello to the North American XB-70 Valkyrie, the fastest super bomber in the entire world that you probably never heard about. During and following the events of the Cold War, many nations of the world wanted to equip themselves with massive weapons and nuclear warheads in their arsenal. So the US government decided to shock the entire world in 1964 when it launched the fastest fighter jet in the world to bolster its air power and dominance. They called this super bomber aircraft the XB-70 Valkyrie. The US had initially launched the Boeing B-52, which had a massive payload but was not fast enough to be efficient as a fighter jet. As a result, there was the need to focus on speed. This led to the US developing the Convair B-58 in 1956. The focus was on speed, so they cut down on the payload and the aircraft range. Although the technology focused more on increasing its supersonic speed level, the cutback on payload and range meant that it could only fly so far beyond the radar and, as a result, could not run beyond any kind of interceptor. This meant there was a problem with the fuel required to achieve and maintain the supersonic speed at a longer range and nuclear power to increase the range of the aircraft. Although this problem existed, there was a continued effort to achieve the model fighter jet needed. In a bid to find a solution to this technological problem, the DASH concept was introduced. The DASH concept states that the aircraft has to fly slower than usual for a larger part of its journey to the target. When it is a predetermined range to the target, it relieves itself of its wings and fuel tanks on the outside of the structure and enters into a supersonic speed boost at the target. It can go at a supersonic speed while maintaining a longer range. Also, it can easily move past radars undetected and breeze past any interceptors. Although the concept seemed like it would work, it wasn't enough as it had flaws and criticism from engineers and scientists. However, building up on the DASH concept, engineers began to build an aircraft that could maintain supersonic speeds from the beginning of its launch until it reached its target. This means that it can go a longer mile than in previous aircraft. So, in 1957, the US came out with a strategic bomber designed to max out three times the speed of the Boeing B-52. But unlike the Convair B-58, the payload and travel range were not sacrificed to achieve the supersonic speed. The new aircraft had the same payload and range as the Boeing B-52. This meant it could travel faster than the B-52, carry the same number of arms as the B-58, and travel even farther. This breakthrough led engineers to put more research into improving existing fighter jets. It was during this study they discovered an engineering concept called compression lifts. With this concept, they created a supersonic aircraft that received a double boost. One that travels as fast as the speed of sound and then gets a speed boost from the sound waves it emits. This supersonic bomber aircraft was named Valkyrie B-70. On the outside, the XB-70 Valkyrie was 196 feet long, stood at 31 feet, and weighed 531,000 pounds with its body made of titanium. The Valkyrie B-70's engines were designed to travel at speeds as high as Mach 3. Made of 2,700 tons of steel, the B-70 could easily outrun even the fastest fighter jets. Although engineers discovered that it was possible for one of the six afterburning turbojets to fail during flight, the engines were designed to be strong enough to maintain its Mach 3 speed until it completed its mission. Since the B-70 had to reroute the sound waves under its wings to boost its speed, it needed to focus on developing its wings to be flawless. The Valkyrie's wings were the most stable of all aircraft and fighter jets traveling at supersonic speeds, with the wings able to improve their lift-to-drag ratio while enhancing the compression lifts under which the sound waves are redirected. At takeoff and landing, the B-70's wings can easily be fully extended. At low supersonic speed, it could be slightly angled downward. And then, when it reaches high supersonic speed or multi-mock speed, the geometry angle of the wings is 65 degrees downward. The airframe also needed much attention since kinetic heating around it would be three times more than other aircraft and fast fighter jets. The usual aluminum frame was not enough to withstand the heat since the aircraft was now traveling three times as fast as the speed of sound and two times faster than the existing aircraft. To resolve the airframe problem, the engineers designed a three-layer fuselage skin. 
The first and the third layers serve as a facing sheet with an adhesive layer that joins it to the second layer. The second layer was to protect the airframe from softening up due to heat and ensures it cools during its missions. So the layer contains the honeycomb heat dissipating stainless steel. With these advanced technological innovations, the Valkyrie stood high and above existing aircraft and fighter jets in the American arsenal. But there was a problem. Although the Valkyrie XB-70 was flawless on paper, when it first launched in September 1967, it showed various engineering and technical problems. Its initial launch date was moved because engineers noted different engineering issues with the design that needed sorting out. But still, not all the problems were sorted when it finally launched. Although the B-70 was designed to travel at a supersonic speed and easily reach Mach 3, it barely scraped the Mach 1 threshold during its first successful travel at supersonic speed. Its first Mach 1 travel was not very successful. On landing, the aircraft looked like an ancient aircraft discovered under some underground ruins as the paint had peeled off its body. All the issues with the aircraft were fixed, and the aircraft was prepped for its next trip. This time, it crossed the Mach 1 threshold, didn't reach Mach 2, but still came down with a host of faults. The faster the aircraft traveled, the more it displayed engineering and technical issues. The first time the aircraft properly crossed Mach 2 and neared its originally expected Mach 3 threshold, three engines developed serious faults, and the horizontal splitter tore off. It was not until October 14th, during its 13th trial, that the aircraft finally reached Mach 3. But this also came with other severe faults. When the aircraft reached Mach 3, the wings, an essential component of the aircraft and its ability to reach supersonic speed, broke off. The engineers then decided that the best speed threshold for the XB-70 at that time was Mach 2.5. They could control all the damages and improve the aircraft components so they didn't come down with the same faults again. However, once it crosses the Mach 2.5 threshold, the most vital components, such as the engines and the wings, develop faults. Beyond the engineering problems of the Valkyrie, it was unsure if the aircraft could evade ground missiles that protect the enemy's airspace. At that period of launch, the Soviet Union had launched a sophisticated missile called the S-25 Birkut. These fighter ground missiles changed the scope and potency of fighter-bomber aircraft. It could detect bomber aircraft and fighter jets and fire at a long range. The range of this missile is long, and it travels at a fast speed. So if the Valkyrie cannot go beyond the missile's radar at a longer range, it can easily be shot down before reaching its target. More so, the ground missiles of the Soviet Union could hit aircraft at an altitude far higher than that which the Valkyrie could travel. As a result, the question of whether or not the Valkyrie could achieve the original designer's aim of going into enemy lines carrying payloads was very doubtful. However, although the S-25 Bearcoot could easily target aircraft at higher altitude, targeting one from a lower altitude was a problem. As a result, the US scrapped improving the Valkyrie as a supersonic bomber aircraft and instead used aircraft that can fly at a lower altitude. Flying at a lower altitude was not the forte of the Valkyrie, and it would not be effective. This was going to be a critical juncture in repurposing the use of the Valkyrie. Due to its deficiencies in the fast technological advancements of long-range missiles as defense technologies, the Valkyrie was no longer sufficient to work as a bomber fighter jet or a bomber aircraft. So, engineers started to alter and change some components in its design to fit the new reality. But this was far removed from reality. They tried to repurpose it into a missile launcher, a space aircraft, an aerial refueler jet, or even a supersonic transport system that can travel at Mach 3. However, although the aircraft proved to be a failure for military use, NASA swooped in to find a new purpose. It became a supersonic flight for them. Then, after fixing possible problems with the second Valkyrie prototype, the aircraft shockingly traveled beyond Mach 3 for the first time. The news of this outstanding achievement made the government deem it ready for its original intended use. So, around this time, the XB-70 and four other supersonic aircraft went up for a photo session. But what followed was shocking, as one aircraft crashed into the Valkyrie, completely damaging it. The two pilots flying the aircraft sadly lost their lives in this ghastly incident. 
Ultimately, the Valkyrie proved to be an unsuccessful $2 billion investment. The first prototype that survived is sitting in a museum presently. Do you think that the Valkyrie would have been one of the best aircrafts if those bad events didn't happen? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below.